to my pub. Some of you have asked me, how was studying the Welsh language at university? And in Honeyobath, in this kind of thing, I think this is a good video to make. So this is just not like my normal ones. Just this, this is more of just straight up talking head. I'm not going to edit this so much. And that's just how it's going to be for this one. But at least I'll give you a good foresty backdrop. So, Minesia Studio. I studied the Welsh language at university twice, undergrad in Bangor, and then I went to Cambridge after that, and then now back to Wales. And I asked some of you to submit questions. You've given me some, most of these will be your questions. So let's begin, let's get into the first question. Chris says, were there any international students studying with you? Not in my year that I, I remember, that they came in and out, some people were visiting, but most were native Welsh students. I think in the year ahead of me there was some, and the year after me. So, not really, but they were around on the periphery of other years. Are there any separate classes for Welsh medium and English medium students? Do the groups mix? Yes and no. <laughs> so there's specific modules that people of non-first language Welsh might specifically take. They are gotten up to speed in the Welsh language and then joining with Welsh speaking students. Whether you mix or not is largely up to you. Um, I hope that you take an active role in trying to communicate and trying to join with others in speaking Welsh. It's not something that you're going to be forced to do, but it's, indefinitely, it's definitely encouraged. There are Welsh speaking halls of residence if you wish to live with people who are speaking Welsh, there's ample opportunity to do so. My personal experience is it is the best way. <laughs> do I regret studying Welsh? No. Um, no. It's it's formed who I am today, and I would not be here speaking to you heb thee, without it, heb thee. No. <laughs> Grammar versus practical uses, broadly speaking. Yes, there's a big emphasis on practical use and the spoken language, but because it's a university degree, you do need to learn the grammar and that's explicitly worked upon. They try to be balanced with this, but there's an awareness as well that if you're going through these programs to learn the Welsh language, you know, you, you are kind of the future of this language in a professional sense. So we do need you to be able to expand upon the grammar. You need that knowledge because if people who are not studying the Welsh language as a degree don't know the grammar, who is going to? But at the same time, especially for non-first language students, we want you to be able to speak it out in the community.
How many students study Welsh and why? Um, how many? So per year, you would have to say, and then per institution. So there's Bangor University, Prifysgol is university, Prifysgol Aberystwyth, Prifysgol Cardydd, Prifysgol Abertawe. There's a smaller bit in Llanbed, I think, but it, it, I don't know much about that one. There's... and Wrexham, but the numbers will vary. In my year, there, there couldn't have been more than 25, 30. So I would say fewer than 150 people would study it at degree level a year, certainly across Wales. Um, the reasons why they do that are very different, but many people seek jobs in education. That's one avenue that you would go, not so much academic, but education, because that's a steady, stable role that you can take. For me, I just wanted to learn about the culture and the poetry. Some people do it because they want to join their community where they are. And some people do it because they want to get in touch with their, their ancestors or a better understanding of who they were and are. But the reasons would be on an individual basis. I mean, if you think, if you're watching this and you want to learn a Gamraig in a Breivis school in university, I mean, that's really up to you why, isn't it? And it's going to be a personal reason for each and every person. Any challenges you face using formal Welsh in less formal contexts and vice versa, is the gap comparable to Arabic in literary and spoken Welsh? Yes, not Arabic, but yes, there's definitely a gap between literary and spoken. In 1588, there was the Bible established in Welsh and that set down a a solid language that we can aspire to, but it didn't formalize the spoken language and we never had, because we were conquered quite early, we didn't have a courtly language in the same way that France or England or Spain did. Yeah, so we had a series of patois emerge basically. If the channel grows, I'll be able to do more of these further away from all these noises, further into the woods with my own house and stuff, maybe. But back to the question, formal versus colloquial, basically. Um, mine is quite literary because I, I studied it so much and it was an attraction to me, the formality, the old poetic language. And I think that did intimidate some people because they tend to just throw in lots of clumps of English and I simply refused, still often I refused to do that. And in some cases, I just created a word because I didn't know what the word was in Welsh because people, even when they were speaking Welsh, kept using the English word and it drove me insane. But, so for instance, one amusing memory is I said to my friend's mother, a glaudarian, the rain shield, because I didn't know the word for umbrella. And they said, umbral. Oh, so you don't really have your own word for umbrella. Okay. I didn't know, so I just created a word, but it's umbral. Anyway, about the Arabic comparison, well, Arabic expanded and it subjugated and oppressed like dozens of different nations and forced their language upon the local population. I mean, 
Arabic and in Arabia is a colonial power. Wales, we never did that. And I would suggest that our language in relation to the literary tradition is much more like the relation of modern spoken Hebrew to literary Hebrew, in which they can understand it, but it's a bit unfamiliar. Whereas Arabic, because of the underlying languages in, re in regions like the Maghreb, these underlying languages have changed Arabic in those regions in a way that you don't get in Welsh. And really, the formal language is a bit stiff in Welsh, but it's perfectly understandable in spoken tense. It's just going to put people off guard, and I do feel that my spoken Welsh does catch people off guard because of its formality. But in some cases, I do that intentionally because I think people do need to hear a dialect that's not their local little village because that's a problem in the Welsh language as well that you will run into. And it makes it difficult when you're trying to appreciate Welsh literature from an outside view when a novel is so geared toward like a tiny village at the head of a valley, it's not really relevant to any outside experience because you're using context that only makes sense within a few square miles. And so I would say the difficulty is the opposite of Arabic. How hard was it moving and all that goes with it, example, transferring credits from the United States? Well, I didn't move to Wales directly from America. I was living in England at the time, so I need to mention a couple things. One, I made a mistake, which hopefully someone can learn from. I would advise you to get a post box or some kind of post address in Wales if you're living in the United Kingdom and then apply for being a student because the Welsh government often offers uh, help for Welsh students that it does not give to English or Scots students. And I think I missed out on a couple offers because of that. And it further complicated bureaucracy later on. So if you're in the UK already, try and establish yourself as a Welsh student just to avoid complexities later on. As an American, it was rather straightforward because I had indefinite leave to remain. I had all the bureaucracy done with. I was almost a citizen in their eyes. As for my credits, again, it was different for me because I was already 30 years old, which I'll get to in the next question. And that meant that they were going more upon my life experience and my commitment to the Welsh language already established. I was able to speak Welsh reasonably well. I mean, I could have a basic conversation, no problem, at that point already. And that was a big factor. So coming from the United States directly, you're going to have to deal with a lot more bureaucracy that I did not have to deal with. And I would wager in some cases it might be more cost and time and just mental effective to immigrate to the UK first if you're planning on settling here in the long run, tackling all those issues before you even approach university. How is it coming in to study as an adult? Now, I came in at 30 years old, but I grew up in a broken home and I had traveled widely, so I didn't quite understand the difference that had developed in me as a 30-year-old man and people coming straight out of school, which I dropped out of high school early. So I missed out on a long growth phase 
and I didn't see the gulf. It was quite a shock. I was living in student residences and then suddenly with people who had gone straight from living often on a farm, which I had never encountered before, to independent student living. Whereas I had gone straight from home to living on the street in America, pulling myself off of that, traveling, emigrating, living in London, living in other places, then coming to live in a student hall. So the gulf between us culturally was wide. Now don't get me wrong, these kids treated me with every respect. They were kind, they were friendly. There was an understanding that I'm older, but being without family here, I had to immerse myself in that age group. I'm not proud of how much drinking I did, but I did quite a bit and it, it helped. What kind of attention is given to Old Welsh, Middle Welsh and Early Modern Welsh? Now, this is a good time to mention my Cambridge degree as opposed to my Bangor degree. Cambridge was much more focused on the earlier versions of Welsh, the earlier poetic tradition, not as a living language. And Bangor were keenly aware, painfully aware, that this is our future, that we're trying to train people who can work professionally in Welsh, and we focused much more on the living language, which you have to if you're in Wales. This is our future, you know? We don't have the luxury, like we had in Cambridge, of treating it like something that you study forensically. So there's a deep difference between the Oxbridge view of Welsh and the Bangor or Aberystwyth view of Welsh. I'll get to Cardiff and others in a moment. Early modern Welsh, there's a bit of focus on in, in Bangor, which I, I did enjoy that course. In the last year big paper that we all had to write, it was noticeable that everyone on my course went for some kind of 20th century genre, writer, poets, that kind of thing culturally, to write their paper on but I went toward the medieval Welsh. And both are valid, but it's, it's a keen differentiation to notice because these students all around me were born and raised in this Welsh environment. They wanted to study their own language as something that's alive that you feel, and that's important. I, I value that, and you have to have that. It's just not, how I went into the language, you know? So there's not as much of a focus on the earlier Welsh. You will notice that it's mainly people whose first language is not Welsh who tend to go for these earlier versions of Welsh. Because if it's your first language, you want to learn more about your culture that's alive. And that's important to grant preeminence to, I think, frankly, without ignoring the fact that the poetic tradition is valuable, of course. What are the job prospects of a Welsh degree? <laughs> well, what are the job prospects of any degree, period? If you're not going into the law profession or medicine, or something explicitly specific, historically attached to a formal rigid degree, I would say, frankly, unless it's only knowledge that you're wanting, don't even bother. <laughs> I mean, I'm glad I studied Cymraeg, it made me who I am today, but... <sighs> would I do it again? because I thought it would lead to a, a high-ranking position because, you know, I, I come from poverty. You know, I want to better myself. But a university degree now does not lead to a better job. 
It does not give you a promotion in rank, in status. Degrees no longer do that for you. I had hoped that it meant that, oh, I was joining the managerial class now, or the executive, you know. But I'm competing for entry-level jobs. Now, it does mean that I have gotten those jobs rather than not. So that's an improvement. And I have worked as a translator. And I have been able to get jobs which are administrative, which require Welsh. But it's not going to truly advance your position simply to get a degree that's not law or medicine. And I'm afraid I have to mention this in this video. Getting this degrees, these two degrees, and then coming back into the job market was a rude, harsh awakening for me. In that, I'm sorry, but it's just how the world works now. If you want a better position, it's all who you know. It's about how much money you have. And it's about hoodwinking and striking deals with people in nepotistic circles to gain a promotion. It's not about what you are capable of. That's not how the world works anymore. That's how it worked for the baby boomers and Gen X. It's not how it works for us. Sorry. But a lot of people get this degree also to go into education, which is very valuable. I tried that briefly, but I noticed quite quickly I'm not. You know, if a kid's opening up a window and being rude, my first reaction is just to throw him down. I'm, you know, I'm not going to be a good teacher because I'm going to just be like, get down. You know, that's not really going to work in a school. So, but if you're more gentle, Maybe being a teacher is good for you and we need you. So please study Welsh, become a teacher. It's a good profession and it will help make this country better. Is the colloquial language generally pushed for learners and also the starting point at university. The colloquial language is pushed, and rightly so, because you need to be able to speak it with other people. But again, relating to the older question that was in this video, if you study Welsh, we do consider you the future professionally in some sense of this language. So you need to know grammar. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, it's a bit uncertain, this question. But, um, and also the starting point at university. <sighs> a lot of the problem with my answering this question is my starting point for Welsh was not university. I began on my own. I began with a dictionary that had basic phrases in Welsh underneath each word. Yeah, I would say that they're fused. Just, <laughs> yeah. Are practical writing skills taught? Yes, that's a big emphasis. You can't write, I mean, the papers are written in Welsh. You know, if you're writing a paper on a novel or such and such, it's in Welsh. Is there a clear divide between native speakers and absolute beginners, intermediate and so on? Yes, but that would happen in any language, no matter where you are. It's just the degree of ability that you have and joining natural conversations in a circle. However, you know, you can go on these websites and there's clearly, if you're a beginner and you're interested in this language, you know, we want you to join us. We want you to be a part of this. We want you to go on to be proficient and fluent in this language. We will help you as much as we can. You know, um, in these universities, there's usually a course for beginners, like a year, a year long to get you up to speed and then joining 
the, the periferud, the, the mainstream of learners. So I didn't do that. I jumped straight into the three-year course. But others with me, you know, they, they had taken a year first. You know, I had that additional experience as an adult, having studied a bit on my own. But a lot of people, I think more so in Aberystwyth, you know, they give you a year of study to get you up to speed, to focus on learning the basics and, you know, for beginners. And then you enter the course for people proficient in the language. So they do accommodate. Intermediate, they're going to push you more towards the three year, like they did me. But they will give you additional help, additional modules usually to continue that structured getting you up to speed as they did me, which was a great help, by the way, I think. I mean, it was, I was quite advanced intermediate when I went in. So it was a bit, those modules were a bit too easy in some case, but it was needed because, you know, you can't leave behind other people. And it gave me experience. It gave me that extra support that I needed. Do universities accommodate adult beginners? How often do they go on to graduate work? Well, I think I'm living proof that they do accommodate adult beginners. Well, I wasn't a beginner, but yes, they do. Um, I've known a couple people who, who were beginners that were taking courses or modules attached to other. They were members of the university in some fashion and they, they took these extra modules. So yes, they do help you. How often do they go on into graduate work? Um, well, I went on into graduate studies, but if by graduate work you mean studies, it's quite usual, I would say, because a lot of the people who are non-Welsh, who come in to study Welsh, they have an academic interest, and that's well known, expected sometimes even. Many of the more academic-sided people who I encountered were second language. Many of the greatest academics in these fields have been second language. That's not uncommon, I would say. So yes, definitely. Which university would you choose to study Welsh in? <laughs> well, I did go to Bangor and I was quite happy with my selection. So I am a bit biased, of course. Um, I like, contrary to popular belief with the mountains and stuff there, what I liked was the wooded land around there and the, 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 the easier to walk coastal land, which I, I enjoyed. But if you are second language and you're interested in this language, I would certainly say either Aberystwyth or Bangor, just because it's, it'll be easier for you to assimilate into the language and culture. I mean, if I had gone to Cardiff, frankly, I don't know if I would have kept it because I would have been in a city. Yes, there are Welsh speakers in Cardiff, Cardiff, certainly. But I would have been around so much English that I don't know if I would have kept on with it, frankly. I, I think I was passionate enough to keep going, but it would have been troublesome if I had lived so far removed from the cultural lands where Welsh is a normal language. So I would definitely say if your first language is not Welsh, bang out or with, but if your first language is Cymraeg, so the chi'n siarad Cymraeg fel iaith gynta, but the un dweud mynd i gardydd neu ebrytawe, oherwydd mae'n mor bwysig i Gymru Cymraeg weld byd y ddinas, byd heb ddyfada, 
a fobl mechter squar, come the bach. You know, it's good to see different surrounds. I would like to add a word as well about the political sense. There's always this reminder in the literature that you're kind of joining this group that's like this oppressed and then it's, there's this oppressor and I find that frankly a bit oppressing. And in reaction to that during my studies I became much more conservative and almost a Tory in reaction to this, in the literature sense, this narrowness of political thought. In the academic sense, many of the studies are so focused on left-wing pseudo-Marxist socialist ideas that I reached a point where I said, I don't want to belong to any of that. And I think Welsh studies need to make, needs to make an effort to liberate itself from the shackles of being constrained and limited to left-wing ideology. Because you're excluding, frankly, the majority of the population. You need more writings, literature, novels, from the viewpoint of people who are not culturally left. You know, include monarchists, include unionists and their views in the Welsh language or include culturally conservative nationalists, include capitalists seeing the market and economic aspiration as good, include, okay, the, to be fair there is quite a bit of Christian denominationalism which that's included, fair enough, you could add that that is a small c conservatism. But in the courses that you'll find, the literature that you will read, certainly from the second, no, the first world war going forward, there's this bias towards this collectivist notion. And I think that does drive some away and I worry about that. And I would like you to be aware that that exists if you're coming into the language so that you're not shocked when you're studying this language and you're finding that there's no great diversity of ideas, because part of that comes from being a minority language. We are small. To produce a girth of ideas is an enormous work for a small culture. But I must say that for the size that we are, we punch well above our weight and if you choose to study this language at university, you, you will have koroiso, you will be welcomed. Just put in the work, show that you want to do it, make an effort. And explicitly, if you want a profession as a teacher, it's a good way to go. We need you. <laughs> um, there's not enough emphasis on relation to business and the Welsh language, promoting entrepreneurship in the Welsh language. I think maybe business departments and Welsh departments should form more partnerships to promote economic growth. It's a muggy, cloudy day. I hope this is coming through right. Well, I hope I've answered your questions. A few of you wanted that video I'm here to serve you at the end of the day. I can't always do what one of you specifically wants because I have to kind of go with what I'm able to cater toward a group of you. But hopefully that served a group of you. And if you'd like to help keep this channel going, please join me on Patreon. I'll put a link below. Donate, super like, leave a like. and. I think I'll go for a walk in the woods.